Well, that evening I was reeling from a, a diagnosis of cancer and Don was redoing our bedroom. You know, he went out and bought new furniture <laughs> and papered and painted and got all his friends in. And I mean, my God, I had a beautiful place to recover. And then that evening, I'll, I'll never forget it, um, he lay beside me all night and cried and cried and cried. <laughs> and said, um, I've been trying to protect you since you were 15 years old, and I can't stop this. And he never cried again after that. But that night, that endless night, it was just so awful because I was so far away and I was so walled in glass, but I could hear him cry. I kept thinking I should be responding. And I couldn't. I couldn't. So they came to calm the horror to ease the suffering, to work ceaseless hours in the service of their boys. To two world wars they came, to face the blood and the appalling risks, to become for hundreds of thousands of Canadian and Allied troops, angels of mercy. Cartoons of the Canadian Wilds, Hector Charlesworth, Saturday night. The hot mush school, the advanced atomizers who spray a tube of paint at a canvas and call it sunshine on a cow shed, Toronto Daily Star. The elements? Hungarian goulash, rock and maple, <laughs> drunkard stomach. Rather like a Christmas tree nightmare, which might have visited Scrooge, Toronto Telegram. In the first third of this century, seven men conspired to alter the face of a nation, to change the way people looked at the land around them, to unlock the energies hidden within water and sky, rocks and trees in ways not seen before. To do this, they assaulted a fortress of tradition, 
of skepticism, of ignorance. The Group of Seven. Art for a Nation. shine so bright does the toy castle start its day only at night when your eyes are shut tight do the wondrous toys start to play sound the chime time to play it's a magical wonderful day all your friends spring to life join the toys in the castle i'm the soldier i'm the shader ballerina i'm the clown beautiful dancing playing and prancing whirling whirling tumbling down
first sketch uh, that I made it brings back uh, a kind of an interesting memory because uh, it was uh, based uh, not on the eye, but uh, uh, the sound I experienced when I was age 12. I built this uh, modest uh, treehouse, which was my sanctuary during the wartime because uh, we were in an internment camp. This one evening uh, in the treehouse, uh, I heard this, this wind. It was a kind of a half wind, half breeze, and there was really an eerie uh, sound going through the leaves and the, the trees, and, but at the same time, very comforting. Next up, line number 50A. The supplement to the spring catalog. Tom Thompson. Thank you. Live 120. Or size five. $8,000. $120,000. $1,050,000. And sold $1,050,000. Selling now at $1,450,000. An artist's reason for being is to create a body of work whose meaning transcends time through history. To accomplish this coveted immortality is somewhat of a mysterious journey. Andy Warhol did it with soup cans. Warhol didn't invent the pop art movement of the 60s, but he was its iconic superstar, amassing billions of dollars along the way. Today, many of the great Canadian artists who redefined Canada's art scene in the past are only becoming popular now as auction houses and collectors seek out these masterpieces. What are the roadblocks that face Canadian artists struggling for recognition today? Eight talented artists share their secrets of making it into the centric circles of the art world. I think kids need to know that life without them is terrible. Each and every one of our kids matter. You matter. Life is not good without you. When I leave here tomorrow, you know it's never the same. Thank you. 